Um, all the uh, telescopes have hundreds of sensors measuring position, and, uh, location, position, voltages of all kinds, pressure, pressure. Yeah. approved. The first group I brought out here, you can barely see the nearby antennas. So things are really improved now, and uh, you can see the snow in the antennas. And oh, here he is. He's now putting them into the into the position to try and get the snow to fall out. There's just not enough snow that it isn't going to work, but maybe we could. Or, or he's going to point it, well, he can't be pointing at the sun in that direction. But anyway, so uh, we have four configurations, and the, and the reason for the four configurations is to change the resolution of the array. If people are interested in low resolution objects, that is the, the, the diffuse, faint, milky sort of distribution of emission, you want your antennas close together, because the close together antennas give you more sensitivity to the larger scale structure. If your object is small and tiny, or you're interested in fine scale features like shock waves and filaments and things and craters and whatever, you want the antennas as far apart as possible because those ones, the long spacings, uh, filter out the high, the, the fine scale structure. Um, the young man's head. Go further, keep going, that one there. You'll see there's a big orange machine behind it. That's the transporter. There's only two of those transporters in the universe. Oh, he's pointing at the sun, you see? Okay, this is actually really good for you guys. We're going to go there next, and we get to see if anything melts. All right, so um, <clears throat> yeah, he's not quite on the sun, which is good, so it won't kill the receivers. They, um, they don't have their own transporters. No, there's only two transporters, and we move them sequentially, one after the other. See the snow falling? This is one of the better views I have ever seen uh, from this particular place. So this is the time to take pictures. They're not observing, so don't worry about this horrifying rule. They're busy melting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, I saw the snow fall off. Yeah. So we move these antennas about once every four months to change configuration. We're currently in the smallest, the D. Then we're going to go to the next one, which is C. So all these antennas will be moved three times further out than they are now. And every other antenna is moved. So the right now, so. When we move these antennas, the first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth antennas along the arm, so that's the eighth one there, there's one more, they'll be picked up and moved further down, leaving number two, four, six, and eight behind. So that, makes, that transforms it into an array about three times bigger. And then four months later, the transporters will return, and they'll take again the first, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth, which will then leave only two antennas of the eight currently. And then four months later, we'll come back and move the first, the third, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth out to the ends. And only one antenna is left of those that you see here, and that's that one right there, number eight. Okay, so that's the way it works. And we do that to change the resolution of the array. So it takes you a month? It takes about a, okay, go on, it takes much less than that. So the short moves like this one, that'll take about a week to ten days. The big move, when we're in the biggest configuration and bring them all back, takes about three weeks. Very weather dependent. We're not, the antennas, when we move them on the transporter, are not bolted down. They just sit with their own weight, and you can see that the base is very narrow, and the antenna is very big. So they're like a big sail. So you can't move the antenna if the wind is more than about 10 miles an hour, or we might lose it. So in 30 years, we've not yet lost an antenna. But apparently they almost lost one once where they tried to move at night. Okay, well let's take you down to the antenna. There's an antenna explainer if he hasn't gone home. But if he's not there, I will do the explaining. And that's the end of it when we get here. So come along.
Those horns have to focus on that subreflector. Subreflector is a fixed size. So if you've got a long wavelength, you need a bigger horn. If it's a small wavelength, you can have a smaller horn. You've got to have the same number of wavelengths across that axis. So the paint is a special paint. It's, it's black in the infrared and white in the optical because we want to... 